Welcome to The Fountain. We're excited to get started with our new season. And our desire is to provide our listeners with thought-provoking topics that helps to transform their lives. And you can help us out by continuing to listen to our series and clicking on the like button. And in order for you to not miss any episode, click the subscribe button. Enjoy the message. As believers in Christ Jesus, we must understand that we have the ultimate Supreme Court, which is in heaven. It's not a coincidence that mankind has courts, judges, counselors, and attorneys. The concept of a court and the actions associated with it was conceived by God. Now, although most of us probably understand what the courts are for and how it's important for us to have a good defense attorney, and a fair judge, we need to also know that in the Old Testament, a cry went out to the ultimate fair and righteous God, the judge, Almighty Elion. In Job 16.21, Job is pleading with God that someone was needed to plead on his behalf. He states, Oh, that one might plead for a man with God, as a man pleaded for his neighbor. Now the Hebrew word for plead is yaka. It means to prove, decide, judge. In Job 13.3, it means to reason together, to argue or convince. You see, Job was speaking of a judicial controversy as one would in a court of justice. Also, we have Isaiah 59.16. And it says, And he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness it sustained him. This is the Lord speaking through the prophet Isaiah. The word intercessor means to intervene for someone else's benefit. Both words, plead and intercessor, helps to demonstrate that mankind needed an attorney or representative that God, the judge, could listen to or hear. Remember that in the book of 1 John five fourteen through 15 it tells us that if man prays or asks out of God's will, he will not hear them. It reads, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. You see, it was important that mankind had a lawyer who God could hear, not just any lawyer. Now, if you remember the account of Job, where Satan approaches God, the judge, to advocate against Job, chapter 1, verses 6 through 12, then you can see how important a mediator or attorney or intercessor was to mankind's relationship with God. In Isaiah 43, 26, it tells us, let's plead or argue together, declare thou, that thou may be justified or proved right. God, the judge, wants his children to argue why they are right in whatever battle or situation they're dealing with. And because we have an advocate, he's available to every believer. And it's not just any attorney or a counselor. It's the word itself that became flesh and dwelt among us. John 1.14 Christ Jesus is our mediator, advocate, intercessor, and attorney in God's court of law. When situations or circumstances come against us, believers need to speak the word of God in their defense. You see, Jesus Christ is at the right hand of God, agreeing with the word. This is God's new covenant with us. 
For those who may not actually know what an attorney does, we've all seen TV shows such as Perry Mason, Mad Log, or even Law and Order. And we see them fighting to get their client off by compiling evidence of their innocence or just enough for reasonable doubt. How good the legal team and lawyers are determines a favorable or unfavorable outcome for the client or defendant. We have 12 jurors whose job is to decide if evidence proves probable cause to convict a person. Now, the only thing that's difficult for a jury is whether they have all the pertinent information to make an accurate decision. This is why innocent people are put in jail, because all the evidence or the evidence that they've collected cannot clearly show proof of a crime that they may have committed. I've actually been part of a jury that had to decide the fate of an individual. The evidence is usually not clear cut. So we have to just hope our decision is right because we have no idea of what the truth is based upon what's presented. That's how it works on earth. But what happens in heaven when the believer's case is taken to the ultimate judge, God himself? Now, there are two incidents written in the Bible that gives us some insight into the court in heaven. We also see in the Bible the concept of judges, which began with Moses and carried through to the majority of societies today. The judge has the authority to settle disputes and hopefully restore justice. In the Old Testament, these judges were head of households, families, or elders of tribes. And the king was also considered a judge or supreme authority in the land also a priest in matters pertaining to religious or special cases. Moses was the first official judge in the Old Testament, and this represents the covenant responsibility in the administration of justice. You see, the judge and court system was first implemented by God. In the book of Judges, we can see that they ruled in Israel with authority delegated to them by God, Yahweh who's the judge of all, according to Genesis 18.25. Now, the judges back then were to be trustworthy and incorruptible, Exodus 18.21. At least that's what they were supposed to be. The most important code of a judge was to have absolute fairness and impartial judgment, Exodus 23, verses 1 through 3. Today, we are to see God or the Messiah, the Son of Man, as the judge on Judgment Day, Matthew 10, 15. Now, the concept of judgment also denotes a courtroom setting, Matthew 27, 19. And then we also see that God has a throne, Matthew 5, 34. Now, in the New Testament, we see the word throne represents a seat of authority, as the throne of grace mentioned in Hebrews 4.16, and Christ's seat of authority, Matthew 19.28 and Revelations 4.4. 4. The word throne is the Greek thronos, and generally in a courtroom there must be a judge, and if possible defense and prosecutor in addition to perhaps a jury. Now, I've heard some preachers use the phrase, in the court of heaven. However, I believe that the court is like the throne room of God, where God judges. Hebrews 4.16 tells us, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And then we also see in verse 15, that Jesus is the high priest of the believer. And this signifies that believers are the priests of God. And we'll dig a little deeper into this title in a later episode. But now in the book of Job, we only get a glimpse of the throne room or court scene with the judge almighty God and Satan. 
as the prosecutor. Unfortunately, when Job needed an attorney, there was none to speak on his behalf. Job 1, 6 through 12. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thy hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Now, Join us in the coming weeks where we will expand on three areas related to every believer's position in Christ Jesus. One, what is the believer's position? Two, and why is that position important? And then three, what does our position look like to God? Thank you for listening. But you don't want to miss any episode. So if you haven't yet, subscribe now by clicking the subscribe button below.